Hey everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. In my last video, I tested dimethicone for the first time and got some beautiful yet wild results. I want to see if I can get something a little tamer today by limiting the number of layers in my dirty cup and limiting the amount of dimethicone I add to each color. So let's see what we come up with. As before, I'm going to use OGX's Coconut Milk Hair Serum as my dimethicone product. There's a link to it in the description box of the video below. For my colors, I'm going to use the cyan, magenta, and yellow palette, which are the printer primary colors. I'm using all Artist Loft's colors, and I've listed those in the description box as well. I've mixed about half an ounce of each of the colors, um, and I've added one big drop of the hair serum to each of these cups. And I will not add any of the serum to the white that I'll also be adding to the cup. Let's build our dirty cup. And that's all I'm going to add for layers in this cup. I'm going to spread a thin layer of white paint on the canvas just to prep it for the dirty pour. Okay, the canvas has a nice fluid layer of white and I flipped the cup and I let it sit for a couple of minutes so that the paint could settle. And now it's time to lift it and see what we got. Wow. This stuff just does not know how not to give you cells. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. I put less dimethicone this time, and look at those cells. <sighs> wow. All right. I am... Mm. I don't even know which way to go now. Well, I'm definitely a fan of blue, so I want to preserve that. My word. Is, there's just no shortage of cells ever with this stuff. For those of you that are having trouble getting cells, I'm telling you, I think this is your answer. This stuff is like foolproof. The yellow only seems to have come up in this one little blob in the middle. I'm telling you, yellow blobs <laughs> haunt me. <laughs> like, they, they happen to me every time I pour. There is something about yellow that just seems to like to mess with me. Hmm. See, I've got to get that, that yellow gone. It's, it's now it's just like one big giant blob of yellow. So I'm gonna let it fall off, at least some of it. All right, I don't wanna mess with this too much more. I don't wanna tilt it so much that I lose some of the stuff that I like. I rather swipe out to the edge and maintain what's happened here. This That's really pretty. So I'm going to let this sit for a couple of minutes so that it can move and do whatever it needs to do before I go in and play with it. I still have a little pour in the cup. Hmm. Maybe here, mm, 
here. Let me let some of that run off. I don't know if I'm going to regret that. I might. Yeah, I'm going to let it sit now and see what happens. Wow, it's just so amazing. I, I guess this actually worked out pretty well because this happened naturally in the pour and this now kind of relates to that and so does that. So the only thing here is that corner and I don't want to tilt just to get at that. So I'm going to turn this around and see if I can swipe a little bit into that white to fill it in since there's really not much white going on except for over here and I don't want to tilt because I don't want to lose this. So I'm just going to pour a very thin line of white paint along the edge. That'll grab the paint that's there and then pull it down. And that's exactly what's happening. So because I don't want to tilt to make it come over. So I'm just touching a line of white paint to the edge, letting it sort of connect with the paint that's there. And then because of the weight of the paint that I'm adding, it sort of sucks what it grabs onto and pulls it down. So I've zoomed you in so that I can do something about this little white corner here, which ordinarily wouldn't be a problem because it's feathering nicely. But since none of the other corners are white, I kind of want to fill this in with some color. And I'm just going to see if I can pull at the color that's here and bring it out. Perfect. Then on this side, same thing. That's all I'm going to do there. And the paint didn't run off the side here either. So this is just a canvas panel. It's a small five by seven canvas panel because I just wanted to do a test, but it's such a pretty test. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this edge. So what I'm gonna do again is just put a thin stream of paint that touches the paint that's there. Once that happens, I'm gonna load up on it and it's going to become so heavy that it's going to run off the side and pull some of the paint that it grabbed onto down with it. A little bit more on this corner, this little blip here. Excellent. Yay. I, I, I am a dimethicone convert, I gotta say. There is something about this stuff that just seems to love to make pretty cells with paint. Oh, another thing that I want to do is here, this little corner over here, this white line just comes to a dead stop. That was where I, I poured that extra paint, so I'm going to... Kind of bring it down so that it makes a little more sense. Okay. I kind 
kind of wish there was a hair of white just in here a little there just a little bit in here I think that would let this area pop a little more I mean it's pretty but I think it could be even more And then I need my skinny skewer. It's just giving that area a little bit more definition. Just a hair. And I'm looking around to see if anything else could use a little bit of that kind of brightening. There's a bubble there. Okay. I think that's it. Holy cow. Well, while I have you zoomed in, I will show you the rest of the canvas. How beautiful is that? So I wanted to do this as a test before committing to a big canvas with these colors and this amount of dimethicone. This is so vibrant and pretty and happy and whew, it's amazing. Okay, so my mix was one part paint to four parts Floetrol. Um, it was Artist Loft paint, Brilliant Blue, Brilliant Magenta and Yellow and their flow acrylic white. And my amount of dimethicone was the equivalent of two drops per ounce. I now want to see how this serum will react to other brands of paint, other colors, and I also want to decrease the amount even more than I have so far. But for now, I remain blown away by these results. So far, the serum is great, and it smells fabulous. No toxic silicone fume worries at all. I so recommend that you try it. There's a link for it in the description box below the video, and I also have it in the shop that I set up for you guys for you to find lots of fluid art products on Amazon very quickly. As always, I really hope you got a lot out of this video. Make sure to subscribe so that you can see more tests, techniques, and maybe some fun. Let me know in the comments what you thought of these results. If you'd like to contribute to make more videos and tests possible, there's a link for that too. Thank you so, so much to the amazing people that have helped the channel so far. You are making all of this possible, and I'm so grateful. Sharing the videos also helps, and a thumbs up lets me know if you like what I'm doing and want to see more. I look forward to your comments and hope that you have a wonderful, creative week. I'm off to do more tests now. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye now.